Yoko So from Japan, last time you asked me questions about Japanese and now we're gonna answer them. Here we go. Make me up 169 says, what's the most offensive Japanese phrase? Well I'd have to say it's uh Oh Shacho Which basically means Hey boss! But trust me, you don't wanna say it like that in Japan. That's really offensive. Tokyo Sam says, Ashi 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 o tete kurenai. No! How do I say man of African descent stole my only means of self power transportation? This one is actually in my textbook, oddly enough. It goes like this Chikisho, Tokyo Samu ni Jitenchi o nusamareta, Butsukurosu ze! Stargate Heaven 23, whose name I wonder about, says, Why does arrive, Suku, and where, Kiru, use the same kanji? Well, uh, when Japan imported the kanji, uh, I think around, what was it, 1100 AD, um, they said, we have this word, suku, it means to arrive. And then we have this word, kiru, it means to put on. If only we had some kanji for them. And it turned out one kanji had both meanings, so it was used for both. And, uh... So, yeah, that's the, that's the short answer. Um, that particular kanji has an interesting history, because it's a variant of another kanji called uh, Cho, or in more Japanese words, Ichijirushi Arawasu, which actually means notable or write a book, but still kind of means uh, arrive or where. And uh, if you look at the, this, this kanji that Suku and Kiru are a variant of, you can see some plants above a person, and uh, you can say, you can be seen that uh, the plants, you know, you gotta reach a certain point of growth and that's where the arrive came from. And then uh, um, the plants could be in flu full bloom, which means, you know, you'll be decked with colors and that's kind of where the, um, the decoration and wearing came from. And so that's the long answer. I do. 013 says, which kanji is the most rings, making it most confusing to use? Well, that'd probably be this one, which has all these readings, and but it doesn't really make it hard to use. It more makes it hard to read in certain contexts, like no context, context, and even then, you still probably have a kurigana to help you out. So I would say. Uh, being confusing to use does not apply to kanji with lots of readings. Ling is an art says, I would like to know how to use the potential verb conjugation form. For example, saying, can you eat this fish? Onegaijimasu! Well, I think the best way is to, to learn about this sort of thing is to go to an online dictionary called www.jdic. You can Google for it or find it on my blog. To the right of any definition for a verb that you find on that website, you'll see uh, a link to the conjugations for the verb. Any conjugation possible in Japanese for every verb is there. Um, now as for your example sentence, <clears throat> I'd probably say something like Kono sakana tabemasu ka? Or Taberaru if I was being um, a little more casual. Alright. Bobo for life, Bobo. <laughs> says, say clay is super provocative in Japanese, so I can say it back to you. Uh, wow, provocative. I don't actually know that word off the top of my head. Clay-sama wa moe-jana. Demo, wazato moe-jana. Something like that, maybe. BB on Crumb says, to find the difference between the wa and ga particles, well, wa is for topics and ga is for subjects. Finished! In your face! Dano Fedoni says, What's the longest Japanese word used on the top line of the keyboard? E.g. in English, it's typewriter. Well, in Japanese, I would say it's Tate Isu Kanami Rase Kibodo. Complex word, but yeah. Maiming Betty says, I got a question for you. How to use Kero in Japanese? And also, what does Irundakero mean? Alright, keto means but, dot dot dot, and then you're supposed to guess what the problem is, why they're saying but, and irun dakiro means, uh, probably, depending on which iru you're talking about, it means, oh, somebody's here, but, what, you want me to get them or something, or maybe they're busy, don't know. Danny Sola says, who do you think would win 
in Neko Mata or an Inugami in a death battle and why? Uh, that would probably be the Inugami just because uh, I would think a Kami can beat an Obake. I mean, they're Kamis, for heaven's sake. Ozzy78 says, Okay, I want to know, top plus one, why do Japanese school leaders have all the rules stand on the right, walk on the left, except for Asaki and Asaki and everybody still stand on the left and walk on the right? I know it's a deep and philosophical issue with great knowledge in the ancient Japanese leadership, but it's worth a shot. Well, actually, you're wrong, because everybody around here stands on the left and passes on the right, so uh, I cannot answer a question that is not correct. What? Uh, Radri says, Tell me a better way to say Tsuge Opai. Kimi no Opai wa Kurei sama no yona mune mitai desu ne. Lemon Colors asks R FC Ichigo Hachi san to R FC ni Ichi nana hachi no jigai o tsutsume shite kudasai. Tsutsume wa ko desu. Eleven Colors san, omae o korosu yote ima tsukurimashita. Uh, Misfit Cactus says, Hey Clay, thanks for taking time to answer our questions. What I really want to know is I'm really into Japanese music, J-pop mostly, and on more than one occasion I've seen things strange with lyrics of the songs I listen to. For example, Kisetsu, parentheses, Toki, O Hakobu Kazeyo. Now, I know the reading kanji, Kisetsu is normally Kisetsu, seasons, but what does it mean when the singer sings Toki time and writes this? How should I understand this line? Is there a dual written meaning? There is a dual written meaning. They are taking advantage of the fact that uh, you can write uh, letters usually above uh, kanji, uh, but sometimes in the parentheses, like here, and uh, you pronounce the word according to whatever reading is provided, but it still kind of has the meaning of the kanji, and it's like a way to have a nuanced new meaning to the same word. Uh, the same pronunciation as usual, but it's a different nuance, so it's a cool thing that you can do in Japanese, but you can't do it in English. Yeah, I don't think a Mike Jack Lens waterproofing as well says, Edo Tamara, particles and conjugations of verbs. Tara, dara, te, ta, na, nai, da, siru. What's the best way to learn the rules of all this? Uh, by studying your Japanese textbook? Yeah. Then the video is over.